This is Danielle Burnock from DanielleBurnock.com. Love yourself from Survive to Thrive, that lady on the internet who loves you. And I want to know if you are familiar with the term disenfranchised grief. I came across this term somewhat recently, but it's been around for a while. The term was coined back in 1989, but like I have shared about so many other terms, it doesn't matter if you know the term about whether it has anything to do with your life. Knowing the term can help though. So that's why I bring these terms to you to share them with you to help you get a better understanding. I have suffered from disenfranchised grief. You may have too. It is very common. I had no idea. Disenfranchised grief is something I dealt with when I was dealing with the trauma that I wrote about in my first book, Emerging with Wings. The quote in there that has gone viral around the world and in different uh, languages starts with trauma is personal. It does not disappear if it is ignored or invalidated. And that's the key. With disenfranchised grief. Disenfranchised grief is grief that society does not recognize or your culture might not recognize. You're suffering from something, but you're surrounded by invalidation. It's not bad enough. It's not hard enough. It's not painful enough. It's not whatever they say. Many examples of this are the loss of a job, the loss of a pet, which has become more acceptable in the few years, recent years, with people loving their pets almost like they're people, and animals are wonderful, but they're not people. <laughs> But another example of disenfranchised grief is, is the loss of a sentimental object. Have you ever lost something that belonged to someone you knew that is no longer alive? A parent, a friend, a relative, or maybe even something from your own childhood that got destroyed. When I, I'm a friend of mine who's in my book, Because You Matter, she lost everything in a house fire. Well, people will look at you know, the big picture of that as you can grieve that because they consider that a big enough trauma. But there may have been very specific things that she lost that compounded that grief. It, you, we can't just put it all in one big box and that's what we tend to do. That's what society tends to do to us. But we can fight back if you are suffering from disenfranchised grief, there are four things you can do to help yourself. One is name it. Recognize it. Give it a name. Recognize it. Call it out. Say it is what it is. No matter if you lost a job, you lost a spouse, you lost your earrings that your grandma gave to you at, at your confirmation, or you had an abortion years ago and you just beat yourself up over it and that, that poor child has been lost, or a miscarriage, that's another thing. Some people discount those because the baby wasn't real yet, which is a crock of expletives. I won't go there. <laughs> I suffered disenfranchised grief when my daughter-in-law lost her baby. She had two miscarriages. I disenfranchised myself though. No one did it to me because I wasn't her. Maybe you've done that for yourself, to yourself. Maybe no one even around you has done that, but you've done it to your own self, invalidated your own grief. I have been guilty. But I luckily had some friends around me who surrounded me and said, no, your grief is just as valid. It is different than the mom's. I was the grandma. I had different grief. It didn't make it not grief. It just made it different. And what you need to do, that first thing is you need, need to name it, call it what it is. It's grief. You're mourning. You're sad. You, you have this thing. The second thing to do with it is to ask for help, get support. I can help you, I'm a coach. I can coach you through something, help you get to the other side of that so that you can move forward. And the third thing to do is to do some form of grief work, to process it in some way. You could journal about it, you could 
buy yourself some little memento to remind yourself of whatever was lost, but some sort of way to process that grief, to get it outside of your body and to do something with it. And the fourth thing is to move forward. Not like I talked about the other day about toxic positivity, to pretend it didn't happen and just move forward. No, no, not that. That's to allow yourself to look forward with that hopeful positivity, to let yourself make plans without whatever that thing is that you have lost. So I wanted to share this with you, disenfranchised grief. Maybe you have suffered it, maybe you're going through it, or maybe you know someone who is going through that. And so encourage yourself, encourage your friend or family member, whoever you know who is going through this. If you need help, reach out. I can coach you through this, bring you to the other side where you're not stuck anymore. And you can love yourself and you can bring yourself into a new, a new day, a new you, a new whatever the new needs to be because of that thing that you lost. And so until next time, I'm Danielle Burnock from DanielleBurnock.com. Love yourself from Survive to Thrive and I love you. That lady on the internet who loves you.